So today we're going to take a look at the uh, remaining trig functions. Uh, we don't need to be perfect experts in our class for those graphs, but we do have to be able to answer some questions. Um, so we won't spend nearly the time that we did the other day of going through all the different sine and cosine transformations, but um, let's take a look at some of their key features. So for example with the tangent graph, um, one thing to remember here, it'll help us figure out some of the things about this, is that tangent is sine x over cos x. Um, if we wanted to take a look at the graph, I actually have some software here to help us out. Um, we'll transfer it in in a minute. Um, let me just make sure. Yeah, that's fairly similar. Let's uh, change the range a little bit here. Um, let's say we go from negative 6 to 6. And I'll go, uh, oops, sorry, I've got that backwards here. It's be negative 1.5 pi. So if you're putting it in your TI-83, you can uh, use the same window. So we'll take a look at the um, tangent graph. Okay. Um, so you can see that it also has some asymptotes. Um, I'm going to graph a couple of those here. So there's one at um, 1 half pi right there. Um, there's another one, it's easy to see, at uh, negative 1 half pi. So I'm going to put this picture into our uh, notes, so um, let's transfer it in. So we said there was a couple asymptotes, so we definitely want to record that at half pi and negative one half pi. And, oops, that's not a very good curve. Let's try that again. Oh, I'm not having good luck today with that last time. Okay, well, that's acceptable, I guess. So here's, um, oops, wrong one. There it is. Okay, so um, that's what you should have at least the first cycle. And um, we could keep going. The next cycle, there's going to be another asymptote here. And the next one is going to be here as well. So again, we'd have the graph looks about like this. And on this side, there. So here's some of the important questions that we're uh, going to have to ask about the um, tangent, is what's the period of this graph? Um, we might as well label these asymptotes. So hopefully one thing you can notice is um, this is one cycle of the graph right here. So this black line, that's one cycle. It keeps repeating that picture. So one cycle um, has a distance which goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that's a period of pi. So be careful because this is different than the sine and cosine graphs which have a period of 2 pi. Okay. Um, if we look at some of these asymptotes here, um, we're going to write down their um, where they occur. So let's put all the ones that we found, uh, um, like there's pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, um, we had negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. And remember, this is just going to repeat every pi units. So for example, there's pi units when I go from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. So you should be able to predict where the uh, other asymptotes are going to occur just by manipulating the period. So that's enough, we don't need to keep going. But because we can keep going, um, we'd like to know what a general equation, an equation that says all the asymptotes that we have. So if we look at this, um, one way that I could describe this is I'm just moving along by pi over 2. So I could write that down as pi over 2 plus pi n where n is an integer. So what about the negative numbers? Well, if n is an integer, it could be like negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and it'll still generate this list for me as well. But what you'll find is by using just this one equation, we could generate every possible asymptote. So it's more descriptive than even what we've written in the first example here. Okay. So if we take a look at the cotangent graph, 
um, just a good reminder for yourself is the cotangent of x is equal to the cosine over the sine. Oh, sorry, and I'd also forgotten. Um, one thing I wanted to illustrate here was we have these asymptotes. Um, why do you think there's an asymptote? Remember, asymptotes mark where a problem occurs. And those asymptotes happen where the cosine of x equals to 0 because what we've then done is we've caused a divide by 0. So that's why we have an asymptote there. And that's important to remember because when you're trying to find this without the graphing calculator, you're trying to say where does the division by 0 happen or where does the bottom of the fraction equal to 0. Okay. Um, so this time when we look, we're going to see the cotangents graph. So let's get that up. So, um, oops. I don't think this graphing calculator has, does it? Oh, it does have a cotangent x. Okay. So this time I'm going to mark some of the asymptotes for you again. Um, for example, there's one at x equals 0. Um, there's one at x equals pi. Um, there's another one at x equals uh, negative pi. So again, it's a very similar looking picture. Let's transfer it into our notes. Um, there's one here at x equals pi, one here at x equals zero, and one at negative pi. So remember, um, the reason those asymptotes are there is because at those values, sine of zero is zero, sine of pi is zero. So what we're doing is we're dividing by zero and that's making the asymptote happen. So that's why it's helpful to remember that relationship about cotangent because that helps us find where the asymptotes are. So let's um, transfer this graph in. So I'll just let you, uh, my artistic skills aren't that great. So that's uh, one more time about what it looks like and we're gonna transfer this over. So I'll do my best here to try to put that curve in. And it's gonna look kind of like that getting cut off in the middle at that spot. And like that. Okay, so again, if we look at it, there again is one period of the graph between there and there. And that's the distance from zero to pi. So the period is also pi, which is nice because both tangent and cotangent have the same period. But again, it's different than cosine and sine, so be careful because um, you may have a problem here if you're thinking it's 2 pi. Um, and we should be able to, do just like we did for tangent, we should be able to predict more of them. If the period is pi, that means the next asymptote is going to happen somewhere around here at 2 pi. And then 3 pi, and so on. Um, and if we go in the opposite direction, right, the next one should be out here at uh, negative 2 pi. So this will be negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, and so on. So again, we'd like to be more descriptive than just to simply list them. Uh, what we call the general equation will show us all possible asymptotes. Um, for this one, you could think about it as 0 plus pi n, um, 0 being our first positive one. But again, you know, we don't normally write a 0 plus. We would just write it as pi n. And we have to be specific and say that where n is an integer, because that way it covers all the negative multiples too, right? When it equals negative 1, you get negative pi. Negative 2, negative 2 pi. Positive 2 is 2 pi. So it covers all of them. And 0 is also an integer, so we'll end up with that one as well. So that's the general equation there at um, pi n. And remember, where n is an integer is part of what you need to uh, state with this.